As part of Autism Awareness Month, I have been sharing stories from the perspective of moms grappling with their child's diagnosis. To wrap it up, I sat down with Becca, a bubbly mom of two who shares her journey of taking care of her autistic son with us on Instagram. That's where I met her, actually. I'm not sure what post drew me to her, but ever since then, I have felt grateful to see her son's life through her lens. So today, I'm going to take you through a conversation that we recently had. But before I do so, this is Mama Tales, a podcast on our collective motherhood journey. I'm your host, Sally Kuria. I'm currently recording this on a cold, rainy, dark night in Nairobi. KPLC did its thing, and I'm really hoping I have enough power and bundles to finish up this episode. We have been experiencing heavy rains in many parts of the country this past few weeks. I hope that you're keeping warm and dry and out of the weather. I know given our very regular and almost quote-unquote shocking drainage issues, moving around is also tough. But keep safe and be careful. Have you followed this podcast on social media yet? You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Mama Tills Podcast. I've got to give a big shout out to TikTok though. It's To be honest, it's a little bit rocky. I had no idea what I was doing there. But I figured out once I know how to use the app as a consumer, then I'll figure out what to do with it as a creator. And that's what I've done. And um, I don't think I can do without it now especially hearing from a lot of people in the comment sections that's exactly where everything happens and it's a beast all on its own it's quite an interesting place to be to be honest so if you're wondering what i'm talking about just go check it out yeah that's our mama tales podcast i know i keep saying this but i am currently recording stories conversations and receiving topic suggestions so do you have a story on your parenting journey that you'd like to share with us let me know by filling in the forms in the show notes of the episode and I will take them into consideration. Remember that this is a space for all of us to learn, grow and find community. Your story is powerful and your story matters. All right, enough of the chit chat. Let's get into the conversation. And we can start. Thank you for being here, Becca. Maybe you can start with a little introduction of yourself and your family. Okay. Hi, I'm Becca of Moms Nest Kenya. I am blessed with a family of three, um, my husband and my two kids, uh, Jonathan being my first, who's six and is on the spectrum. And then there's Noni, who's two. Tell me a little bit about your kids. How did, would you describe them? Jonathan is empathetic and he's He's my little handbag. Mm. Oh, <laughs> he, he's always around me. Yeah. Um, but he's brilliant and he's a go-getter and he does not limit himself to doing things. Yeah. Mm. Then there's Noni, who's a firecracker. Literally, she is away. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is, she's something else, but yeah. she is... I think she, okay, she likes doing everything by herself, number one. Mm-hmm. So she motivates herself. She's one of those. I, I, I don't know if it's, it's a second born thing that yeah. they just, I don't know, find themselves, a space for themselves. Yes. And she fights for herself, but she's amazing. I get that. My son is like that too. Yeah. Sometimes I used, to, I used to be very worried when I... When I got pregnant with him, it's like, because I knew his sister is a big personality. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, will he find space? Mm-hmm. That boy created spaces for himself. He fights for himself every single freaking day. Yeah. And it just shows me that maybe I shouldn't have worried about him too much. Yeah, that was me. I really worried about the second one, of course, because of Jonathan being on the spectrum, um, being a second time mom. Yeah. You worry a lot. Yes. Yeah. I think my whole pregnancy, I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Who's coming? Is mm-hmm. she going to be? Mm-hmm. How, how? What type of personality will she be? How yeah. will she be? So it was one of those, but I'm just grateful to have both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a bit about Jonathan. Okay. Right? He's your first child. Yes. Never had a child before. No. <laughs> Talk to me about um, those first early years and then at what point did you notice something was a bit different? Okay. Um, for Jonah, you know how kids cool? Mm-hmm. I don't believe I had Jonathan cool much. 
I didn't even know what cooing means. So my mom came and tell me, is it cooing? I'm like, yeah, cooing. <laughs> cooing? <laughs> like, cuckoo? Go, go, go in. Like, yeah, just some baby language. And I would just be like, no, he's just a calm baby. And when my friends would come and visit, they're like, oh my God, Jonathan is such a calm baby. So that's what I took from the onset. Yeah. But as the months progressed, I started, actually, I started noticing a little bit some cues here and there. Take, mm-hmm. for example, he would not respond to his name. And, and this I, is how old? Are we thinking? At about, I mean, even from six months, you know, a kid will know yeah, when they're yeah, called yeah. and they'll follow the sound and all that. He never used to do that. So you call him by his name, he won't respond. When he started walking at one year old, he would walk on his top, tiptoes. Mm. He'd walk, but mm. mostly on his tiptoes. I was like, oh, I have a ballerina. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, I did not know, but that was also a cue. Um, another thing we noticed was eye contact. Mm-hmm. When you call him or when you try and talk to him, he never used to look at you in the eyes. And yeah, those were some mm. of the point, the mm. things that we noticed. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you have your concerns, right? Yeah. When do they become too much for you to start asking for help or guidance? I think for me, the tipping point was when we were 18 months and above and we didn't have any words. Mm, mm. He couldn't even say mama or baba or mom or dad or hi, nothing. It was just, actually, I keep telling people, the only thing he used to say is mama, 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 baba, 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 baba. Not yeah. a distinct mama or baba, yeah. no. Yeah. So in my head, I'm thinking, eh, there's something wrong. Mm. And you know, mom, moms know best. Yeah. So I'd always go and say, ah, I think there's something wrong. I think we should go and see the doctor. But you know how everybody is normally. Boys, he's yeah. a boy. He will, take he'll take time. He'll talk later. So I kind of like listened for some time. So that was from 18 months. But when he turned two, I was like, no, mm-hmm. I have to do something. But I still had the, he's a boy. He will... Just wait, just wait, just wait. Yeah. So I eventually just said, no, I will take him to get an evaluation. And that's when we went and saw a child developmental pediatrician. And that's start when we started the process. Mm. Yeah. How did that look for you? Well, to be honest, um, when I, the first like appointment with the doctor... Jonathan really cooperated. Oh, yeah? Because <laughs> <laughs> I went with a, a notepad and I was like, so my son is doing this. He's doing yeah. me a dread. In yeah. my head, I'm thinking, we are two and a half. By that time, it was two and a half. He was two and a half. So I'm like, he's doing this. He's not doing this. He's opening and closing the doors. He's flickering the lights. He's, he's, he's doing all these things. And guess what? We were seated over there. Jonathan is opening and closing the doors. Wow. He's... <laughs> he's making things rather easy. Yeah, yeah. So he's showing what... He's, he's, he's yeah. exactly showing what I'm trying to tell the doctor. And the doctor just kept on looking at me. She's like, this is one of those easy consultations. Mm. But, of course, it just doesn't end there. Um, of course, we had to do the hearing test. And, you know, many people keep asking me, um, why a hearing test? I also asked the doctor, why a hearing test? And she told me it's not about if he can hear or not. Is because I told him, hey, dude, I told her, when you put Cocomelon, he will be in another room and he will dash. Yeah. Mm. So definitely he's hearing. Mm-hmm. And that's when she told me it's not about what, if he can hear, it's what is he hearing. Mm. That's what they needed to understand first. Okay. Is he omitting vowel sounds or whatever? Or it's maybe not as clear. He could be hearing it faintly. So we needed to do the first test, of which is... Not mm. easy because okay. you have to do you have to do the te- you have to do the test when he's asleep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Then how how does that? Okay. Sorry. So it's during the day. Yes. So what so happens you're is you're told to, to you're told to keep him up the whole night. Then in the right. morning, yeah. So in the morning when you go to the um, the place where they do it, he can sleep. Yeah, we tried three times. 
three. Wow. Thrice. Thrice. It wasn't working. Yeah, how do you keep a child away? <laughs> and you know you're putting like your, those, um, what are they called? The, the, you know, like heart things yeah, yeah, for the, the brain monitor, to the, monitor. The, 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 it didn't work. So I think as you now the last option is we decided to just give him some acetabellantoni yeah. to make him sleep yeah. a little bit. Yeah. And we managed to get it. So we come back to the doctors and we're told he's hearing and he's, everything is clear. That's fine. And at that point is when we did a further assessment and then we were diagnosed. Mm. So he was diagnosed with level two. The three levels um, in this diagnosis, level one is, they call it mild I think that's older terms, but it's mild. Mm -hmm. Then we have the level two where you'd need a little bit of help. And then there's the level three where you'll need subsequent, um, you'd actually need more help, mm -hmm. in other words, mm -hmm. for the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how Jonathan you, was level two. Yeah. How did you take that diagnosis? Can I be honest? Yeah. I was relieved. Okay. I know most people say they were like shocked and I was relieved. Mm. Like finally, mm. I was number one, not crazy as a mother to be yeah. looking and saying there's something wrong with my child. And number two, finally, I can help him because mm. there's, there's no, I mean, when you're with your child, you're trying to figure them out. You can't help them because you don't know what yeah. is wrong. Yeah. But at least now, you get the diagnosis. It was hard, of course. Uh, I was relieved first. Um, but then I still had to go through the grieving process. Yeah. Grieving what uh, my son, ideally, at that time, I thought society would tell me that he would not do. And it was a hard time. It was a hard uh, grieving process. But I, I believe it's a process that any parent should go through mm. to get to the other side. What's the kind of help that he needed? Okay, so when we got diagnosed, we were told we needed to do occupational therapy, speech therapy, and ABA therapy. A, B. A, Applied Behavioral Analytics. Wow, okay. Yes. <laughs> and there are only three. At that time, that was years back, mm -hmm. there were only three specialists. Yeah. Tell me. So take us through. Take us through. <laughs> It goes through the reality of what that looks like. Let me tell you, yeah. hey, give a little grace to any any parent caregiver who has a child on the spectrum because mm -hmm. it is not easy on them mentally. It is not easy financially. I can tell you for ABA, at that time, Jonathan on level two, um, I think we needed to see a specialist and the specialist, the cheaper one, was 150,000 per month. That that's not cheap. 150,000 for that per one month. therapy. For that one therapy. That just one. One. We're forgetting we have OT, yeah, we, have we have speech. speech. So we're wow. looking at about 250k per month. How? Okay, so let's let's let's, let's How? move it back. <laughs> what, what is happening in the ABA? It's it's uh how can I say? We didn't we didn't do ABA. We opted out of it. Yeah. Number one, because I too did not understand ABA at that time. Mm -hmm. And also the financial. Yeah, that's it's just heavy. Uh but the the specialists, when I once I got to know them, they're amazing. Mm. But they're also not Kenyan. Now we have Kenyans. <laughs> thank God. Mm. And thanks to Deborah Senepe, who opened a program in um Yes, so you call the Kalel program mm -hmm. that they actually teach uh, the assistants of the ABA specialists about ABA. Okay. So now at least we have the ABA specialists and those who actually assist them. Because it's not the specialists who will come to you direct. Yeah. So initially, years ago, we didn't even have those other guys who would come to the house. So it yeah. was expensive. Yeah. So now with that, everything has at least been subsidized. Mm -hmm. And then we also now have more ABA specialists, at least two or more at that time. Yeah, I'm still trying to understand what ABA is. You said applied. It's behavioral. like it's it's behavior, like yeah. trying to. How can I explain it? How to uh, adjust the kind of behavior because you know with autism comes a lot of behavior elements. Yeah, yeah. In terms of uh, listening mm -hmm. and adhering to things. Mm -hmm. 
it's it's, it's can lot. I can I just tell yeah, you yeah. I will not dive into ABA. It's yeah. a bit complex yeah. and also it's very controversial. Ah, uh, okay, okay. No not sense. everybody. I see what you mean. Yes, mm. not everybody is for it. Other people are against it. Other guys. So me, I'm just there because I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. We didn't do it. Do it yeah. However, yeah. Yeah. the speech therapists that we hired and the OT, they know it. They know yeah. they've. They have preview to it, mm-hmm. so they found a way to mesh it all in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he didn't necessarily Re- yeah. miss out on anything. Yeah, but they just made it theirs. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm, I get what you mean. Yeah. So how often would you do therapy, the two of them? Um, we did therapy four times a week. That was just OT and occupational therapy and speech. And at that time, we also enrolled Jonah in school mm. he was in school before then covid happened then now uh, we enrolled him back in school because yeah online courses were, classes were not working how yeah. my child was not even concentrating yeah <laughs> he was not even concentrating and then we were being told to do work as in we were sitting i remember oh gosh yeah because we got the diagnosis during covid mm-hmm. and i'd actually even just gotten a job that I didn't ever go to, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you that just now. <laughs> yeah. But during COVID, I mean, you remember, I don't know if you guys yeah. had the online yeah. classes. No, I mean, I did. My baby was like three months old. Okay. We had so, online classes. Yeah. You know, and the other kids would, when you have, the other kids would actually sit through. Yeah. Jonathan, missing. No. <laughs> I got to a point, I even just told the teacher, ah, you know what, this is not for us. Mm. So let's just wait for class, class. Yeah, then now, yeah. after that is when you got the diagnosis. Uh, coming back to work, uh, I had just gotten a job. You know, the answer for you're excited, Mm-mm. getting back to work, and it was a nice job. But with what it entails... For early intervention, yeah, we sat down as a family, um, and me and my spouse just decided I'll stay home, mm. and I'll just take care of Jonathan. Yeah, how yeah. did that choice feel for you? Um, I learned parenting in a completely different way. Okay, so over and above the occupational therapy and the speech therapy, I also learned this play therapy. Mm. I also learned you can do things with your child at home more than what I was doing and had the time. And yeah. now I would research. Yeah. <laughs> I became that babe who does not, I would not sleep. I would research. Yeah. I, was, I told myself the only way I can understand what my child is going through is by knowing what autism is. Yeah. And by understanding what autism is, is literally understanding him and his perspective of things. So yeah, I just became his playmate, mm. literally. <laughs> wow, yeah, and and does this now transition to when you started Mom's Nest or no? Okay, no. All right, so then how? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> then let's take it slower. So then, okay, fine. It's so that play, play. So I said, I yeah. then also f- found love okay. in creating activities for him, mm. and because I would see he's now slowly trying to engage, and also. The benefits that came with the play is yeah. what I needed. Like if it's fine motor, just massaging and working on those fine motor, like those hand muscles to build for other things. Yeah. Like right yeah. now we are in year one and we are now writing. Wow. So mm-hmm. it started somewhere. Before, trust me, he could not even hold a pen mm-hmm. or a, a pencil or a crayon. In fact, we knew when Jonathan holds a crayon, he'll break it because mm-hmm. of too much pressure yeah. and just... It's, mm. it's a, it was a journey, let's yeah, just say that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, then how did we... Because I came across your page mm-hmm. through you sharing. Yes. And a bit more about about him and, 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 and your daughter too and, and the things that you'd create for them. But I'm like, I could really resonate and, and connect mm-hmm. with you sharing about your journey with your son. Mm-hmm. And I think my question here is, why did you decide to make that switch? Okay. So, I wish there were more resources then, okay. when we were diagnosed. Uh, the sad and hard part about being a caregiver with a child on a spectrum is 
you get very lonely. Of course, there's financial, yeah, the financial element. So you have to cut back on so much. Then there's the grief. Mm. And you maybe blame yourself that maybe if I did this, there's all that. Then comes the loneliness. Yeah. Because you also are so afraid of taking your child somewhere because of judgment by society. So it was tough. Yeah. And I just didn't have people. I had a few like my family, but I didn't have people who would really understand what it is mm. that I was going through. I just wanted somebody yeah. I could talk to at any one given time. Like I would be like, Sally, hey, mm. there's this and this happening. Could you help me? I didn't have that. Yeah. And it was just lonely. Mm. And for me, that's when I decided um, I'll first educate myself. Okay. I'll first understand what autism is and, you know, get to know my child mm. in depth. So two years later, it took me two years. The two, two years later is when I opened up and said, you know what? I'm going to help other parents. Yeah. I'm going to actually help other parents. Um, so currently I'm now help, working with 102 moms. Oh, no, 102 parents, six being men. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so, so when you say working with them, it's just like, so you have a whole other... Wait, what do you mean by working? Working with them? with them is walking the whole journey. Wow, okay. With them. From when someone will message me and tell me, I need help. Uh, where do I go? Mm -hmm. And I jump in and basically point them at the right direction if they need any help. I have people who message me, call me even at night. Some of them, I tell them, please, I had to go on quiet mode yeah, <laughs> on my yeah. phone because there's a day I got a call, like, I think at like two in the morning, Gosh. there's someone's child who was having a meltdown and they just needed help. And it's just parent to parent, you know, I'm not talking as a specialist. I'm not talk. I'm not a specialist. No, I'm just a parent who has been there. Mm -hmm. So I kind of understand where the parent or the caregiver is coming from. Yeah. So yeah, so that's what I do. I just literally, um, Talk to people. It sounds like a whole full-time job. How do you keep saying through it all? <sighs> Therapy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you're not only carrying your own burdens, but you're carrying other people's as well. Therapy. Yeah. Therapy come and plays a huge part. But guess what? Also the fact that I am helping someone out there, I think that outweighs anything. Because mm. I literally wished... I had a me then. Yeah. Yeah. As yeah, simple as that. And someone who just, I may not respond. I actually only work on Instagram mm -hmm. and some TikToks. I don't, ha they don't have my number. So we just talk. And I have known the 102 parents without even knowing their faces. I know their children. Yeah. Without even knowing their faces. It's just a community that has been built over two years. What did you say are the pros and cons of sharing your son's journey online? Because, I mean, we all know that um, the internet can be your friend and for at the same damn time. Oh, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for me, I look at it like this: the pros, of course, are that I create awareness. Yeah. Um. What I do, the reason why I started Mom's Nest and also just decided to push um, autism and advocate for it was so that my son can always be included because we've been in situations where we've been kicked out of classes. Mm. We've been kicked out of play spaces. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Why? Because our children are not at par with other kids or mm. it's hurtful i work with me I've, me I've been kicked from a, i've been removed from a class like we've been removed from a class other parents are removed from schools Gosh. imagine that hurt and ugh, it's yeah i can't even dive into that because yeah. it breaks my heart it literally breaks my heart i mean why take a child if you know they're on the spectrum then you kick them out anyway yeah 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 sorry it's what that is <laughs> um yeah so we've I'm even now forgetting. Yeah, pros and cons. <laughs> the pros and cons. <laughs> <laughs> because of 
Because I've just remembered, I'm just like, oh, it's it's painful. It's painful. Mm. It's painful. Um, so yeah, advocacy and just as I said, helping people yeah. out there. Yeah. The cons are, of course, uh, privacy. I'm a very private person. Well, most people, I don't know if you guys know, but I'm very yeah, I'm a very private person. Yeah. So I fear for um, my own privacy and my children. And the fact that I've also disclosed their names, also something that I keep battling and their faces. Yeah. I keep battling with it. But for me, I always say I'm using Jonathan's um, journey for God's glory. Mm. And he will light up this world. Yeah. He will be the example that if you trust in God and if if everything feels just have that ka hope, mm, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, Jonathan, I don't know. You see, I'm also having battles with myself in terms of maybe in years to come, he won't yeah. want to be on the space. Or so those are currently those are <laughs> demons that I'm battling. But for now, yeah. for now, I don't use him for personal gain. I use it so that he can inspire others. Yeah. Yeah. And And what are the milestones he's achieved so far ever since? That diagnosis came in 2020. Oh, Jonah, mm. my superstar. Yeah. Jonathan, oh, I mean, when society told us we could not equate to anything, um, <sighs> I should have carried tissue. <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, actually, Woo. Even, just, even me, this is the second time this has happened, uh, and I found myself flat footed mm-hmm. without any. When I talk when I talk about him, he just has a weight here of yeah, but wow. anyway, yeah. we will it's maintain. Brief. We will maintain. It's brief. It's brief. Emotions are great. Emotions show us how much we care. Yeah. yeah. So for me, um Jonathan, what hasn't he done? Mm. Let me just flip it. What hasn't he done? Yeah, he yeah. is you know, when with autism, most people are told you're not empathetic. Yeah. He is so empathetic. Mm. And initially when he would not play with other kids, he didn't have those social cues. Nowadays, we literally have kids in our house. Oh. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> Even on Sunday. Even, yeah. I yeah. Think. So he's attracting people to him. And they just he just knows how to interact with them and yeah. It has been a journey because before, I kid you not, you'd put Jonathan somewhere, even with his cousins. He'd just be there by himself playing with his own toys, very aloof. Nowadays, there's a guy who goes like, Mom, I'm going outside to play it so-and-so. I'm thinking, wow. Yeah, yeah, go, go, go. Go. <laughs> go. <laughs> I'm so happy. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Sometimes it gets overwhelming when you have like 30 kids in our house, but... Mm. Is all right. Yeah. We prayed for that. Yeah. Yeah. So he is talking, of course, uh, fully. He's he's in year one, so he's able to. He's okay. Let's just say okay. we have in year one. I think it's forty minutes per class. Mm-hmm. He's at least able to sit through without prompting for twenty five minutes. Okay. Which is progress, by the way. We said mm. that nothing. Mm. It's progress. So he's able to read. He's able to write. He's able to write to ride bicycles, scooters. I mean, he's just yeah, he's a, a, he's he's just a baby a, boy. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. I I sometimes um, tell people he's on the spectrum, and someone tell me how who yeah him. Yeah. But I keep telling people autism does not have a look. It doesn't have a look. You cannot look at someone and say you have autism. Mm. No, it's just what. Um, he was going through, and he still goes through, by the way, because you're forever on the spectrum. It's just how to manage it yeah. and deal with it. He's very empathetic and very smart. Mm. Oof. Yeah, He's actually quite... Well, I keep telling people the story of two months ago, which I'm still so proud of. Okay, what so, happened two months ago? <laughs> <laughs> Let's even put it even in a bigger stage. Yeah. Yeah, what happened two months ago? And so two months ago... Um, my sister, we're in the same school. Our kids are in the same school. She calls me at like four. Mm-hmm. And I just actually passed 
Jonathan. I sometimes speak him, but sometimes we speak by the river. So we just passed each other, and I was like, I'm coming, I'm coming. So I left. My sis calls me and tells me, have you talked to Jonah? I'm like, no, why? Mm-hmm. What happened? They just told me, oh, you've not, you've not seen him, you've not talked to him. I'm like, no, why? Yeah, yeah. What's, what's up? Yeah. She goes like, Jonah was in a, in a math competition. Okay. So I'm like, okay. Then she goes like, it was a math competition between the year ones and the year twos. Mm-hmm. And he topped the competition. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> What? Then she goes like, no, yeah. No, my nephew is the one who was informing yeah. my, my sister yeah. on what happened. So I told her, hey, let me call you back. I cut the phone mm-hmm. and I called the teacher. I'm like, eh, so what happened in school today? Then she goes like, yeah, there's a math competition and this is what happened. And yeah, Jonah, he's in year one and there's a, it's a year one and year two. He's like, yeah. yeah, and he topped it. I'm like, please explain to like me. <laughs> Explain to me, yeah, yeah, because how it. how that child of mine that I was told, yeah, yeah, just explain to me what happened. Then she told me it was like memory and all that. So Jonathan is obsessed with cars. So you say maybe I drive a Prado, yeah. What type of Prado? Is it a TX? Is it a? Mm. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> how are we knowing such details? <laughs> then he'll come out and yeah. he will see your number plate, and that's it. Next time he'll be like, that's Auntie Sally's number car. Yeah. Because yeah. he's, he's really mem- memorized. So that. that's what he uses memory. And mm-hmm. that's how he. Wow. I was shocked. Yes. And initially, I was that person who would be like, oh, this guy, this child of mine mm-hmm. is only talking about cars. Imagine talking about cars from morning. Yeah. And being asked, mm. so why does the car do this? <laughs> I'm like, child, ask me. In fact, nowadays, I keep telling him, no, Jonah, yeah. ask me about trees. It's something else. Then I'm done with cars. Then he laughs yeah, <laughs> because yeah, we've yeah. been there before. Yeah. He laughs. He's like, okay, mommy, let me ask you about books. Mm-hmm. But he asks a lot about cars. So cars, yeah. with that memory, I did not know, yeah. is nurturing him for something and for yeah, greatness. Yeah. So memory for him. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. That's it's, that's One cool. of those that I was like, yeah, me I always cry. Ooh. Yeah, a, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you, but you've gone through a lot. Does he <sighs> still do any therapy now? No, we actually stopped therapy two years ago. This year, June. Mm. Yeah, two years ago. However, when something pops up, and mostly it's uh, OT related, yeah, we when close communication with the OT. Okay. Yeah. So if we need a Something like maybe there's something because I said it's a spectrum, so of course, there's new things that keep popping up. So, if I need help, I always refer to the specialist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything you do different about how you have shared his journey online? No, just talk more, just talk more. Yeah, you need to talk more. Need, I just, need, uh, I also have this thing about, I just need to talk more. <laughs> Let's just say that. <laughs> Imposter syndrome gets to me, yet it's yeah, it's no, for it's, helping people. Yeah. I, I don't know. You, I, you're I'm so having lovely. meetings. I'm having yeah, meetings with, my, with mm, myself mm, on, mm. on that. So. I mean, I feel like there's a space for that. There's a space for that. There's a space for the light that you radiate. Yeah. There's a space for the experience that you've had, you know, being able to walk with a hundred families, you have no idea how much more you could do just by sharing this one story of, of your of your little handbag. My little handbag. You know what I mean? Uh, um, and then the last question I have for you yeah. is what do you think is your end goal in shining a light on your son's journey? To ensure that our kids are included. Mm. And society becomes inclusive yeah. to kids on just, in fact, not just on a spectrum, but special needs and neurodivergent kids. Yeah. So that's me. Just trying to call, to create that awareness and acceptance because they're just like any other child. Yeah. Different doesn't mean less. They're just like any other child. So I just hope to shine light and bring hope to families and 
you never know what the future holds. You never know. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. And wait, one last question. Does your sister, does your sister, does your daughter, um, what's the relationship between your daughter and your son? Oh, they're so close. Yeah. They are so close in terms of, eh, one wakes up, you can't separate them by the day. Mm. Like, no. If Shosho says, maybe sleep over, I'm like, both of them, you know, have to go, eh? It's not just one. <laughs> not, not, not just one. Because I will be left or the other will go and they will ask questions. Why? Yeah. So and so. They mm. fight a lot also because Noni is a tomboy. Mm. Mm. So she is mm. not fight for physical. Yeah. But they are just kids being yeah, kids. Yeah. But one minute you just know, hey, that is escalating. It's yeah. escalating. It's coming to a fight. <laughs> then two minutes later, you're just saying, oh, sorry, Jonathan. It's sorry. Nice. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Noni. And they hug. And then they tagged him against me, who was selling them. Stop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So they're just normal siblings. They're just normal, normal siblings, siblings. And, siblings. ooh, no and um, just happy. And yeah. I just love seeing them. And I love the bond that they're getting. I just love it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, last thing is maybe share where we can find you. Oh, you can yeah. definitely find me on Instagram. Uh, Mom's Nest Kenya. I'm also trying this TikTok space. So you can also find me there. Yeah, yeah we're all trying TikTok. Yeah. We're all just trying to figure it out. You know, sometimes you feel like you've you've got it. Eh, right? me, me, the millennial in me is wondering. <laughs> Am I? I anyway, some, I, someone, I, the, someone somewhere, please come and assist this, this sister. It, it's, it's struggling. It's struggling. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. It's and a then lot. there's the new, oh yeah, and I, this year has been a, a turnaround in terms of I'm really advocating for self-care. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. One thing that I realized that I did not do, because once you get a child on the spectrum, basically everything revolves around them. Yeah. And you end up kind of like forgetting yourself and and then comes the second baby and it was just hectic. Yeah. So this year I'm just on a wellness and self-care journey, yeah. which I'm absolutely loving. Oh, my God. All the and best. I'm advocating yeah. for kids, especially parents on the, with kids on the spectrum, to take care of themselves What does self-care look like for you? Me, let me tell you. Mm. Do you know, just even time yeah. alone is enough for self-care for me because my life, I, I as I told you, Jonathan, my hand bank. <laughs> There's a reason he has that name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wherever I went, yeah. he went. Wherever he went, I yeah. went. Yeah. So it, I just, and then of course I have a spouse, so I also give time to him. And then there's Noni, and then there's work. Yeah. So I basically don't have time for self care. However, this year self care has been I am, um, I'm in golf. Nice. I started a 10k step challenge mm-hmm. yesterday mm-hmm. with. Over 25 now, moms. Wow. Occasionally not moms, just women. Yeah. And I'm just taking time to reflect a lot by myself. I'm also known nowadays, okay, I've been known for a while, Mm -hmm. to just sit in my car. (laughs) Yeah, I feel like I've seen a lot of videos of you just in your car. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just sit in my car and reflect and then I go home because I know the minute I enter that house... Yeah. Distraction. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I fully get that. I fully really understand. So, that, I, yeah. I, and I feel, by the way, I actually don't feel anything. If someone comes and tells me, oh, how can you do that? I'm like, that is self-care for me, okay? <laughs> I am getting that energy. For, yeah. I, I enter yeah. that, you know, mm-hmm. I'm getting that energy, but I'm just, I'm just kidding. Fine, just fine. <laughs> Thanks, Becca, for yeah. sharing your story with us. I know you were very nervous before. Extremely. Oh, I could my not goodness. hear it anywhere. You did great. Ah, you did. You did yay. fantastic. Um, but thank you. I think we are done. Great. Done. I want to thank Becca Nguru for sharing her story with us. You can connect with her on social media, on Instagram and TikTok at Mom's Nest Kenya. I will leave a link to all her pages in the show notes of this episode. If you'd also want to see this conversation on video, you can find that video on our YouTube channel at Mama Tills Podcast. That's it from me this week. Catch you in the next one. Bye.